Good morning. Thanks for joining us for our lecture on point of care ultrasound for family physicians. Uh, we are going to start with our uh, second module in our series, and this will be our first uh, module on a focused obstetric application. Today we're going to be learning about scanning for fetal presentation. Our audience today involves medical students, residents, and practicing physicians. And as I mentioned, this is going to be our uh, second uh, section, our second uh, module uh, to date. Uh, the first one covered ultrasound basics and the principles of ultrasonography. And this will be our first focused application uh, lecture in our series. Each part includes a pretest followed by a video uh, and some demonstrations, and then a subsequent post test with hands on evaluation. Today we're going to talk about the epidemiology and significance of malpresentation in obstetrics, specifically breach presentation, how breach should be evaluated, detected, and managed, and we're going to talk about practical considerations for ultrasound detection of breach presentation using point-of-care ultrasound. Ultrasound in this context is a screening test, and this slide highlights what the World Health Organization notes as principles of a good screening test. For example, this should be an important health problem. There should be a known treatment for the condition for which you are screening. The test for that condition should be acceptable to those who are undergoing screening. And there should be an agreed policy on who should be evaluated and treated. Uh, lastly, the total cost of finding a case should be economically balanced in relation to medical expenditures as a whole, meaning that we should be searching for a, uh, and treating uh, diseases with screening tests that are cost effective. So does breach presentation or fetal malpresentation fit that bill? And I, we would argue, yes, that uh, breach presentation uh, does, um, uh, and a point of care ultrasound for breach presentation is a cost-effective screening test. We're going to talk a little bit about what uh, the incidence of breach presentation is right now. We're going to talk now about the epidemiology of breach presentation. As you can see from this graph, that as gestational age increases in the third trimester, the incidence of breach presentation decreases. So that by 36 to 37 weeks, approximately 3 to 4 percent of babies uh, at most are in breach presentation, uh, which is outlined at the bottom of this graph. At 28 weeks, approximately a quarter of all babies are breach. Why is it important to know fetal presentation in general? Uh, because ideally we would like to have all of our patients uh, laboring and delivering uh, cephalic presenting uh, singleton gestations. Um, there have been some studies that have shown that breach vaginal delivery can lead to increased uh, maternal and perinatal complications. Uh, it's associated with an increased frequency of prolonged umbilical cord compression, cord prolapse, uh, birth trauma, uh, and increased maternal and perinatal morbidity. Uh, the primary study uh, that helped change management practice in this uh, for, uh, for breach malpresentation was the Hannah breach trial, and I would encourage everyone to uh, use that as a reference to look uh, at what the uh, composite perinatal morbidities were. These are the types of breach presentation. There are three primary types, frank, complete, and footling breach. Frank breach is the most common, and as you can see from the uh, picture on the left of the screen, uh, frank breach presentation is a fetus that is uh, breach presenting uh, with the hips and knees, I'm sorry, with the hips flexed and the knees extended. Um, in this case, the entire breach of the fetus is covering the cervical os uh, with the lower extremities reaching and extending up towards the head. This has the least risk for, cro for a cord prolapse. Complete breach, uh, as you can see in the middle section of the screen, is one where the fetus is in breach presentation, but the hips and knees are flexed, uh, almost sitting what we would call Indian style, uh, like you would remember from kindergarten. Um, footling breach on the far right of the screen uh, is where one or both hips and knees are extended so that a foot may present down and through the cervix uh, or into the vagina. A fetus can present in a uh, single or double footling breach with both feet extending through. This is the uh, most uh, concerning breach presentation and high, as it has the highest risk for a cord prolapse. How should breach presentation at term be managed? 
So once we've found a, uh, a baby to be in pre breach presentation, um, we do recommend an external cephalic version, which will be abbreviated ECV throughout the remainder of the presentation. Um, external cephalic version is where we can actually use uh, ultrasound and our own hands to help uh, rotate the baby from breach to cephalic presentation. So uh, version has been shown to increase the proportion of fetuses in cephalic presentation at the onset of labor, and it does decrease the frequency of cesarean delivery. Uh, and as we all know that cesarean uh, section rates in the United States have uh, climbed and continue to climb. So anything we can do to decrease uh, the frequency of cesarean section uh, is a step in the right direction for uh, perinatal and maternal health. So ACOG does recommend uh, external cephalic version. This should be attempted at a gestational age at or beyond 36 weeks. Uh, it's important to do this in the latter part of the third trimester for a few reasons. Uh, uh, one, it's that at that point there is an increase in the, um, you know, up until 36 weeks, uh, babies may spontaneously vert into cephalic presentation. So a breech fetus at 33, 34, 35 weeks may on its own uh, convert into uh, vertex presentation. And if so, uh, that's something that we uh, would like to have happen on its own and, and, uh, and uh, without our assistance. Additionally, if this procedure is performed before 36 weeks, there's a higher likelihood that even if you are successful verting the fetus to cephalic presentation, the fetus may spontaneously vert back to breech presentation. And that likelihood decreases the farther along in gestation that you get. Um, additionally, um, if a complication of version is uh, uh, encountered, uh, and those complications may include uh, rupture of membranes uh, or labor or a non-reassuring fetal heart tracing that necessitates delivery, then delivery is accomplished uh, at term, which is considered beyond 37 weeks, which minimizes the risks of prematurity uh, uh, for, the, for the fetus. Um, so given the high degree of safety and high degree of success for versions, um, it is recommended by ACOG that a, that a version be uh, uh, offered and uh, recommended to our patients. So when should fetal presentation be assessed? In the office, as we are seeing patients for weekly visits in the latter part of the third trimester, from 36 weeks onward, uh, we should be assessing uh, uh, fetal presentation by Leopold maneuvers. Um, and additionally, when patients come in for evaluation on labor and delivery, for example, if they have ruptured membranes or if they, have, uh, if they think they're in labor, uh, then we should be assessing presentation at that time as well. So um, when is point of care ultrasound indicated to assist in our uh, evaluation of fetal presentation? So if you're doing Leopold's either in the office or on labor and delivery and you're uncertain of the fetal position, uh, this may occur in, in a number of circumstances, but particularly when uh, there is uh, a high BMI for a patient or has a rigid abdominal wall um, or there are multiple gestations, uh, then, this, uh, uh, then point of care ultrasound may be a very helpful tool. Uh, additionally, um, if uh, that if a, a vaginal exam is performed on admission uh, to help uh, evaluate the cervix or labor status and it is unclear whether the presenting part uh, is a uh, cephalic or a breech, then ultrasound can help assess fetal presentation in that setting. Uh, additionally, in other settings, um, point of care ultrasound may be helpful as well. Uh, multiple gestations um, may help uh, determine the uh, presentation of one or both babies. Uh, additionally, if a vaginal exam is contraindicated, uh, for example, in patients with PPROM, uh, that's premature preterm uh, rupture of membranes, who may be expectantly managed and allowed to uh, uh, be monitored on the antepartum service until delivery at approximately 34 weeks. Um, uh, in those in that setting where digital exam has been correlated with an increased risk of intrauterine, intrauterine infection and preterm delivery, that ultrasound may be the best method uh, to assess uh, the presentation of the fetus in that setting. 
So when we scan for fetal presentation, a few principles should guide us. Uh, the maternal position should be supine. Uh, again, this is in the third trimester, so left lateral tilt does help to relieve any aortocable compression of a gravid uterus at term. Uh, the probe that should be used for a third trimester point of care obstetric ultrasound is a transabdominal low frequency probe. The ultrasound machine and the ultrasonographer should be positioned to the patient's right. Uh, and the first step of this exam is to uh, place the ultrasound uh, transducer on the gravid abdomen uh, and, to, and to establish a uh, viable fetus with a heartbeat. Again, a review from our prior uh, um, lecture about scanning for fetal presentation. Uh, when we are orienting ourselves, if uh, as, a, as an ultrasonographer performing a point of care ultrasound in obstetrics, our machine and uh, ourselves, we will be positioned on the patients uh, on the right side of the uh, uh, of the table um, from our vantage point, um, which is the, uh, I'm sorry, the left side of the table from our vantage point, and this, this is the patient's right side. Uh, we will be orienting ourselves so that the notch or the knob on the ultrasound is facing ourself. And in this context, we will be scanning uh, uh, in the transverse plane, as you can see at that top image on the screen. When, and when that occurs, uh, the right side of uh, the patient's body is the left side of the image on the screen. If we turn our transducer 90 degrees so that the notch is facing the uh, head of the uh, patient being examined, then the head of the patient is positioned at the left side of the screen. So in general, whichever orientation you are scanning in, the notch on the ultrasound probe will correspond to the left side of the screen, which is always an important basic piece of information to remember when scanning. So in scanning for fetal presentation, the most important thing after confirming a viable fetus is to establish fetal lie. <clears throat> fetal lie is the relation of the fetal long axis to the maternal long axis, which may be longitudinal, transverse, and very rarely can be oblique uh, in, in, uh, um, uh, in presentation. Uh, longitudinal is generally the case in over 99% of labors at term. Uh, and so um, what we then need to see is the presentation, which is the fetal part that is in the birth canal. What is the presenting part of the fetus, which in the longitudinal lie is one of two uh, parts. Generally, it's either a, uh, a head or the breech, which could be one of the three types of breech we had mentioned previously. So now we'd like to describe how to perform a point of care ultrasound for fetal presentation. What we'd like you to do first is to image the fetal spine to see how it relates to the axis of the maternal spine. That's the primary goal, as if a the fetal spine and the maternal spine are uh, in the same direction, uh, are, are parallel, then we know that the fetus is in either breech or cephalic presentation. If the fetal spine is trans, is, uh, if the fetus is in a transverse lie, then the fetal spine will be perpendicular to the maternal spine. So once you know that the fetal spine and the maternal spine are parallel, you know that the lie is longitudinal. Then we have to determine next whether the fetus is cephalic or breech. And in order to do that, all that needs to be done is to have the ultrasound focused down just above the maternal pubic symphysis to see what the presenting part is. If, a, uh, if the fetus is vertex, then a cranium or the fetal head will be visualized above the pubic symphysis. If the, if the fetus is in breech presentation, then the fetal breech will be present. In the following, vid in the following video, Dr. Honor Wolf will demonstrate the skills described in this presentation. Thank you for your attention today. I want to have it, you're looking at back at the camera. Okay, that's perfect.